The Honorable Leader of the Alberta Liberal Opposition, followed by the Democrat. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Most members of this House are aware that I was once in government. Now, one thing I can tell you is our government sees every single FOIP before it gets out. So it's very difficult to believe that nobody in government knew that the issue of the Mayo Clinic invoice, which was expensed by the former Executive Vice President and COO of Capital Health and approved by the CEO, was a clear case of queue jumping. To the Deputy Premier, were you just very poorly briefed or did you mislead the House yesterday? Honourable Deputy Premier. Mr. Speaker, uh, let me uh, be perfectly clear. Uh, yesterday, I did not have uh, the evidence that's available to us today available to me. So I was making a statement based on the fact that it is inappropriate uh, to make slanderous remarks about any Albertan unless you have solid evidence to support it. Today, now that the additional evidence has become available to me, I have to tell you that in view of this new evidence, my comments yesterday were wrong, and I fully support the minister in his comments, and I know that he has put a system in place to make sure that events like these don't occur into the future. Honourable Member. Mr. Speaker, I appreciate the Deputy Premier saying he was poorly briefed or clueless. To the Premier, the Health Minister, or whoever is properly briefed today, what is the government going to do about the fact that the individual who signed off on this queue jumping ex expense claim and who was on, on the board of AHS until very recently, the former Capital Health CEO, did not see fit to mention this while testifying under oath before the queue jumping inquiry, which was very conveniently no longer is hearing testimony. Is this why you wanted to end the inquiry so quickly? Yeah. Minister, is this why you wanted to end the inquiry? Let me take the opportunity to correct the Honourable Member on a couple of counts. First of all, the government does not review all the FOIP requests, Mr. Speaker, that are made in this province. That is uh, legislation that governs an independent process. And, Mr. Speaker, that process is available to all members of this House and to all Albertans. And to suggest otherwise is wrong. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, on the question of the review and approval of the expense in question six years ago, I cannot answer for why the decision was made or whether it was in accordance with rules that were in place at the time. What I can answer for, Mr. Speaker, is the rules that are in place today, rules that would not permit a situation like this to ever occur again. I believe. Mr. Speaker, it's amazing how this minister slips and slides and how this government jumps when there's a FOIP and some light shines in dark places. Suddenly, the government gets religion and orders that unsavory practices be discontinued. Yep. Premier, since you only root out corruption and waste when we point it out, could you please expedite the process and tell us where we should FOIP next? <laughs> or, better yet, Will you finally do the right thing and authorize the forensic audit of Capital Health Region, which Dr. Chris Eagle, the current CEO of AHS, called for, which you blocked? Oh. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, that, that is entirely inaccurate. The Honourable Member knows that the Alberta Health Services Board, of its own volition, asked the Auditor General to audit the, exec the expenses of senior executives at AHS, including, Mr. Speaker, those individuals who are serving in executive positions now that also served in executive positions in the previous health regions. Mr. Speaker, that report has been made public. There are no concerns expressed with the expenses. Mr. Speaker, this Honourable Member needs to make a decision as, whether, as to whether or not he is going to stand up for the health system that we have in 2013 or whether he wants to stand up or not for a health system in 2007 or earlier.